Hey guys, welcome to Pancreas Pals. Emily here. And Christy. And this week, I'm so excited to introduce everyone to our special guest, Terry Lover, who is the Executive Vice President and Chief Commercial Officer of Dexcom. Welcome. Thank you, Emily, Christy. It's it's such a pleasure to be here with you both. And I have to tell you, um, having listened to a few of your podcasts and preparing for this, it's really inspiring to see the coverage that you provide for people. So real, so authentic, and I think so pragmatic for this community. So it's a real pleasure to be with you. Thank you for those kind words. Christy and I try really hard, but we are nothing if not real. Um, I feel like that's going to be on my gravestone one day. She was too (laughs) real. Um, I am super stoked to talk all things Dexcom. I I do want to say like congrats on this position. I know you you started in January 2023, I believe. Correct. Um, So you, I believe you came from Johnson and Johnson. So the diabetes world. I know they have products, but everything's you know. I feel like Dexcom is so hyper focused. I'm so excited to to hear some of your learnings um, in your time with Dexcom. But I really am, am itching to jump right in because we are coming off the tails of the American Diabetes Association's latest conference and lots of exciting newness being announced. Um, I think for our as I like to call them, pancreatically friendly pals out there, people who maybe don't have type one or type two, or maybe have, you know, relation to it, but don't live with it on the day to day. I do want to get some jargony things out of the way, just a little glossary, if you will. So CGM stands for continuous glucose monitor and Dexcom owns, produces, manufactures, whatever the language legally is there. Don't quote me. Um, Dexcom G6, Dexcom G7 are the, the two current models that are the newest and pretty much mainstream use, uh, Dexcom G7 having been the latest to come out. Um, So I have been wearing the Dexcom G7 for, I want to say, three or four months. And Christy's been wearing the Dexcom G6 since her um, her pregnancy. There, We have some episodes about that um, when she first, she was super into her multiple daily injections and finger pricking ways for the longest time. Right, Christy? That was a, that was a big change for you. I still do MDIs, which is multiple daily injections. But yes, having something that I physically wore was something that I pushed off for the longest time. I was diagnosed in 2012, and I did not have anything attached to my body until 2021. And that first thing that was attached to her body was the Dexcom. So Dexcom G6. Yeah, I haven't I haven't updated from that. I've but see, this is the thing. I'll I'll upgrade my life. I'll wear something that will make my life easier. But I. I'll stick with the same one. Like one, once I do it, then Nothing I don't want to. not consistent. Um, I don't want to change. Let's talk a, before we head into all the newness that's coming out right now and all the the new press releases and exciting times. I would love to to get your perspective on how the G seven rollout has been and how you know like the type of excitement that you guys have at Dexcom because I love the technology. I did a compare and contrast episode because I got the opportunity to test out the Libre 3. My heart always belongs to Dexcom. Um, there's obviously pros and cons to every CGM. So I, I'd love to hear some of your, like what you guys are most excited about for the G7. Sure. And I'll reference some things that took place even before I got here that you may have heard from Jake Leach or Kevin Sayer. Um, so bear with me if some of this is repeat, but I do want to fully answer your question, Emily. You know, We are um, so excited about the G7 platform. This is a platform that was really built from the ground up, new form factor, new technology on multiple fronts, and built driven by what we heard from customers, from the end users, from their families and caregivers about about their needs. And as a result of of those needs, we've we've built a system that in the initial launch is based on the, the FDA, Uh, approved data, the most accurate sensor on the market. Really importantly, it's incredibly simple. We've simplified the application process and the hardware um, significantly. It's a smaller footprint versus the G6. We've worked really hard, even in the very early days of launch, to ensure the very best insurance coverage and lowest out-of-pocket cost so that everybody who needs this technology can get access to it. And we're really, really encouraged by what we're seeing in the initial in the initial launch 
Now, the other thing I'll, I'll share that some of you, again, you may have heard my counterpart, Chief Operating Officer Jake Leach, talk about is that this platform is also built in a way that we can continue to build and improve and tailor this platform over time based on what we're seeing and based on the needs that we hear from the end users. So, for example, there are a couple of updates that we've even rolled out through the software, even in just the first few months of launch, including, for example, um, the silence all feature, which I know is, is really useful to so many people with, with the system, as well as for those starting the system. Now, if you're in a physician's office, you can start the system with an SMS text instead of, instead of having to log in with your email, which I know sounds like a small thing, but if you think about um, a new technology being accessible and easy for the end user, and also easy and time saving for the endocrinology office or the primary care office where, you know, these these healthcare providers have such busy practices. They don't they feel like they don't never have enough time with with everybody. So anything we can do to simplify and streamline that that startup process, what we sometimes call the out of the box process, right? The your first engagement with a new technology, we know is a delighter for the customer and makes people feel more comfortable right off the bat and therefore wanting to to stay with the technology and get its benefits. Very cool. I do want to um to put my like journalism hat on. I have a couple of questions and Christy feel free to like jump in if I'm getting too in the weeds. And Terry, please feel free to tell me if you can't comment on something like totally kosher and I understand that is my life half of the time. Um so two things. One, I'm very intrigued about the MARD score for the latest Dexcom. So I need to Google what MARD stands for, but it's basically like an accuracy measurement that um, that CGMs are used off of. And usually that kind of goes towards, um, I mean, that number gets submitted to, I'm assuming the FDA and different regulatory areas to make That's sure that that it's uh, right. accurate enough for consumer use. So the Dexcom G6 has an incredible MARD score, and so does the G7. They're both very good, respectable, top-tier MARD scores. But the G7 took a little bit of a hit in terms of comparing it to the G6 MARD score. Is this something that you guys, like, that you're seeing that you think will – be worked on continuously to improve? Or is that like a G8 situation where we're like happy with the G7 MARD score? Because I, and before I like you jump in and tell me to take a hike or whatever, I want to say I do find my Dexcom G7 to be very accurate. So, and same with the G6, you know, minus the first 24 hours, which it seems to be a known thing for Dexcom. And honestly, it's still really accurate after that. So, Please, Terry, now that I've cut you, know, you off. It's a, it's a really fair question. And so I'll answer some of it. And then there may be some technical details that we can follow up with separately that are maybe sure. a bit a bit more in the weeds. But I think there's a, a couple of parts to the question there. So um, one is in terms of just our um, satisfaction with the overall accuracy of, of G7. And when we look at the clinical data that was submitted to the FDA and the data in the label, it tells us that, that this is on the whole, um, the most most accurate sensor on the market with G7. So we're really, really pleased with it. And to the second part of your question, Emily, we are always working to advance and improve all of our technology. And so um, that's something that is, that is continuous. Um, we don't expect to have to wait for, if you will, the G8 um, before we continue to demonstrate advancements and improvements. In, in the technology. And um, you know, some of you may have heard again, Jake, Jake talk about when we're comparing you know, G6 today, this is, a, this is a product that's been optimized over many years um, in, in the marketplace and G7, we're, we're just a, a, few months, a few months in. So we, we do expect to continue to advance. This is our commitment to research and development, to optimizing the technology, the hardware and the software. Um, it's a, we, we don't believe good enough is good enough, although we, we are really proud and pleased with the product we have on the market, and, and we believe it is industry leading in, in accuracy, and, and the data supports that. We also know that there is always room to create the better, better, best experience for the, the customer, and that's our commitment to always, always be striving 
um, to have that best experience and best outcome for every user. So we believe we have the industry leading best today, and we know that we need to continue raising that bar um, over time, and, and we intend to lead in that research and development to do so. That's so well put. I think that a lot of people, myself in, included, forget that these, you know, this technology isn't, it's been around for a minute, but it really isn't that old in terms of how long we've had it. So just because, you know, Christie's first iteration of the Dexcom is the G6, like I've been on the Dexcom since the G4 and Miriam's been on the Dexcom since she could only use it to go to her doctor's office. So this technology has come a long way in a matter of, I mean, at least in the last 10 years, it's been an incredible jump. Um, and that 30 minute warm up time, you just cannot beat. Um, I will shout it from the rooftops and you don't even need the warm up time if you overlap your sensors, which was something that I did on accident um, and was a very happy uh, surprise for me. But Christy, did you, I'm, I'm curious, do you have any questions for Terry specifically? Because you've this, you're still so new to Dexcom and I feel like you just have like such fresh eyes for it. I know. So quick background for anyone who's interested, what finally broke me down to get me to wear something. Um, when my husband and I decided that we did want to try for a baby, um, my endocrinologist did not mince words with me. And she said, you are not going to have a better, healthier, happier pregnancy than if you have all of the information with you. You are going to save yourself so much stress. There are going to be so many hormonal changes. Spoiler alert, there were. Um, every minute of the pregnancy. And if you don't have that information to respond to, you cannot you cannot bank on your numbers doing what you expect them to. You need the information. You have to wear it. Um, so I started up with it um, in the fall, I think, of 2021. Um, and basically just to give myself some time before we you know, took a trip to Babyland to really get used to it, see what it was about, um, as someone who was so nervous to wear the device, I guess a question that I would have about the G7 and future models, one of my biggest issues was like, is this going to hurt to stick in my body? What is the process like? Um, I would love to know from the standpoint of the people that are putting out this technology, like, is comfort, like, where does that land in terms of when you're updating each model? Are you looking to update comfort? Is the... Um, like installation process when we go to inject these things into our bodies, like what kind of conversations go on around that from model to model? Like how are you trying to improve on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christy, I really love that question because it's sort of at the core of who we are at Dexcom that our technology and where we focus to advance is driven by our customers, by our users, not the other way around. It's not technology based on the lab that gets pushed out to the customers. It's starting starting first and foremost with that understanding of the needs of the end user. At first, the end user customer, their family and caregivers first. Then of course, we also have to think about the prescribing clinicians and, and their needs and what they can do to make this accessible in their office. And we also do have to think about the, the insurance companies, the, the payer needs, because we can put this brilliant technology out there if, people can't access it, right, from an affordability standpoint, we're not delivering on our mission. So everything, everything we do is a, as a basic principle starts with this deep understanding of the customer needs. And it's something that we um, are very proud of and take really personally here at Dexcom because of how and where we started. And if we have some time, I can tell you a little bit about my history and how I first got introduced to Dexcom, which plays into my passion around answering answering this particular question. Um, now to get to the specifics, Christy, around things like comfort, right? So again, um, comfort, size, wearability, absolutely driven, driven by what we hear from people like you, from chat rooms, from formal research, from the physician and nurse interactions with, with people. We know that um, having something on your body 24 seven, a tool, it has to fit into your lifestyle, right? It, it has to um, fit into, into who you are. And so, you know, the, the G6, uh, G7 is significantly smaller, about 65% smaller than the G, than the G6. Um, and we, the, the insertion was absolutely designed for, of course, um, accuracy and function, but also for ease 
and for comfort. I'm actually wearing, uh, geez, I'm p- pointing to my arm that you, you can't see, right? I have a long sleeve shirt on, so you can't, I'm, I'm wearing a G7 right now. In fact, one of the first uh, commercially made G7s that come off of our new Malaysia manufacturing facility. So, so that's, that's really exciting as we think about scaling so that we can have enough product um, for everybody. And I find it really very comfortable both to insert and, and to wear. Um, I'll tell you personally, you know, I've optimized where it goes for things like um, since we're all we are, you know, women talking to women here on this podcast, uh, uh, sports bras on and off, for example. I know that's something we hear from a lot of our female users um, with with the arm, the on the arm wear. But I have found it very comfortable, very easy. And we're hearing that as well from from customers. Also, the G6 and G7 both are virtually painless, whereas I remember having to work up the energy and like mind space for the G4 because that putting that in was manual. I mean, it was the best at the time. Like we knew, like, I didn't know any different, but I vividly remember having to like psych myself up to doing that because I had just been diagnosed. I was terrified of needles. You could see the needle in the injector. It was like a right. whole thing. And this is, um, this is a huge improvement. So every Dexcom that's come out, I've kind of just been like, oh my God, I, I didn't know that it could be this good. And then it is that good. You know, I kind of brings me to my next thing. And I want to be really mindful of everyone's time. I, This is a very hot button topic I'm about to bring up, Terry, and it's about Dexcom announcing at ADA that they will be coming out with a a CGM for non-insulin dependent users. Um, I feel like I could do a whole episode specifically on that. I have a lot of hot takes, but I don't want to put my own opinions into the mix before I learn more information on it. Um, But I do want to say that Um, As someone who reports in the health space, specifically seeing the barriers to care that people with type 2 diabetes are getting and type 1 diabetes, people with those specifics um, and seeing the prices and how things are coming out on the market, it is interesting to see. And personally, the use of CGMs and those without any type of blood sugar fluctuation, which I know isn't necessarily what this new product for Dexcom is for. But seeing, you know, the NutriSense come out and getting pitches from PR people about, you know, hack your blood sugar. And I'm like, their pancreas is work. Well, what are they hacking? Um, I'm really interested to learn more about Dexcom's newest model. Do you guys have a name for it yet? It's a, it's a great question. There is a lot of excitement about this. And so um, and I'm happy to talk both about this product itself and what I can share, which is not as much as people want to hear right now. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Um, but also, you know, how it what it means in terms of our thinking for overall po- overall portfolio and where and how we're going to continue to advance our through our research and development. Um, so what I can share about this product, uh, I, I will say um, maybe a caveat up front and, and appreciate everybody's patience here that um, we're incredibly excited about this. We are still in the process of working with regulatory authorities and um, all of the work that has to be done to have a product be ready for approval and for the marketplace. And so while we're in that process, we're going to share relatively little about the product itself. But what I, what I can share is about why we designed the product and what are the needs that we're seeking to address. And so um, we know that for people who are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, but who are not yet on any kind of insulin, and not at risk of severe hypoglycemia, that this population is highly motivated to be empowered to take control of their diabetes. And while there is CGM out there in the marketplace, it's not fully fit for purpose for this population. This population has some, some needs that overlap, but a lot of needs that are really unique. So the first, you know, what's the the most important immediate thing that they're trying to solve is they want personalized, actionable insights to optimize their nutrition and exercise regimens. Um, if if you're working off of just an HbA1c that you get from your doctor every few months and an occasional finger stick, it's it's you know we have customers describe it to us. It's like being in a dark room without a flashlight. 
just I, I know I need to do something differently. I just have no idea what because I have no visibility to what's to what's really going on. Um, this population is really um, afraid of progression of their disease and, and all that entails. So they want these insights, they want these tools. At the same time, they don't want to be interrupted throughout the day by alerts. Um, you know, there's a different emotional relationship with what we call diabetes, we use the same word, but it's a very different biological disease and I think a different emo emotional relationship for people with type two and people with type one diabetes. They're, they're really, sometimes I think we do a disservice to both communities by calling them the same thing because they're, they're so different. Um, and along with that, you know, for the, the needs of, of this population, they want a way to feel in control and feel empowered. Um, and so, um, and so while this new product will be on the G7 platform, and we talked a little bit earlier about the platform ability of, of the, the G7 and what it enables for multiple different needs, it will be on the G7 platform, but it will be a 15 day wear product. And we expect to launch it initially with a cash pay option, uh, a really approachable cash pay option so that it can be broadly available while we work with insurance companies to broaden the coverage to this population and have a product that's cost cost and pricing is fit for purpose for the needs of that population. Now, I, I might say, Emily, Christy, one of the questions that I, I get often since this conversation on Friday is, does this mean you're walking away from your commitment to people with type one diabetes? and in particular, those with AID connected systems and continuing to advance the technology. And that's a very easy to, easy question to answer. And the answer is, of course not. We are absolutely not walking away. And in fact, um, it's a real wonderful place to be here at Dexcom to be at a, a size and a scale that we can actually advance our research and development for each of those populations simultaneously, um, because we know that there are things we can deliver um, even more for a type one uh, user and all the, the tools and outcomes that they, they need. And there's more we can deliver for this, this broader population. And, you know, I, I, I believe we, we learn um, as we develop features and algorithms and software for each of these populations, we actually learn things that can benefit the other, the other populations. So, um, so we're, we're excited to, to bring this new product out. And in parallel, you know, Kevin Sayer shared on Friday um, in, in our presentation that in parallel to that, we're also advancing the technology for, uh, for type one, for AID connected users and, and that population. And we think there's a real synergy to serve everybody, um, continue to serve everybody in the best way possible. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um... Just just to clarify, because I know we really have to wrap up like now-ish, um, just to clarify, is this new product going to be like, in? is it in mind for people with pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes, or is it also going to be marketed to people without uh, any type of diabetes? Right. So what I can tell you is today in the U.S., CGM is approved for people with diabetes, and we anticipate that our initial launch of this product will be focused, well, the initial focus will be people who are diagnosed with type two diabetes, but not on any kind of insulin and not at severe risk of hypoglycemia. We also, though, I, I like to describe this product as a gen one version of a non-insulin product. So we certainly intend over time with future generations of this product to be able to, to broaden to uh, uh, everybody who can benefit from this technology, the initial focus will be for, for type two people who are, again, not on insulin, not at risk of severe hypo. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We are wrapping up. So I really appreciate it, Terry. And thanks, Christy, for hopping in. And for those listening who didn't see this video because we don't publish our videos, uh, Maggie, Christy's daughter, got to join us for a hot minute of that. Um, but thank you so much, Terry. This has been so informative really love Dexcom and love what you guys are doing. And I'm excited to, to see what's next for, for all the gens of Dexcom. 
Well, this was such a pleasure for me to get to meet both of you and speak with you. And I look forward to doing it again. Yes, we'd love to have you back. I know Miriam is itching to meet you as well. This is my my spiel, my little wrap up. Follow us on Instagram at pancreas underscore pals. Follow us on Facebook at pancreas pals pp. Email us at pancreaspals123 at gmail.com. Slide into our DMs or emails. We love hearing from you guys. All right, guys. Have a great week.